Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another online open studio. For those of you who haven't joined us before, my name is Liesl Hartman, and I work in the Center for Arts Education at the museum. The Zeitz Merke is a museum of contemporary art in Africa, and it is located in Cape Town in South Africa. The artist who's inspiring our lesson today is Georgia Bear. Georgia Bear is an artist, she's a puppeteer, and she's also a wonderful art teacher. And she has two sculptures up at the museum at the moment as part of our special exhibition that has been put together specifically for children. And the exhibition is based on stories from Africa. I'm very lucky and privileged today because I have one of Jill's sculptures with me and I'm going to show you a little bit of the details of her work and what it looks like. So here we have one of her beautiful sculptures, Jill's sculptures in found wood. So she goes on wonderful walks around the foothills of Table Mountain and to other places and she collects found wood uh, from nature. She carves some of that wood and shapes it to make it into these wonderful characters. And added to that, she picks up found objects and other bits of organic material. These are actually bones. And she creates these wonderful and magical creatures. Um, also on this sculpture, we have some beautiful spiders. And spiders are symbols of creativity. Um, so hopefully our spiders today are going to inspire our activity. Many of her sculptures are based on stories. As I've said, and today's activity is also going to be based on some of the stories from our children's exhibition. Right guys, so today's activity, as I've said to you before, is focused on a story and one of the story from the exhibition uh, that we've put together for children. So like Jill's guardian figure here that I've shown you before with all of the beautiful de details and her found objects and these lovely little spiders, these are plastic spiders guys, they're not real spiders, so don't worry. Um, we are going to look at another story based on a guardian figure. And the story is actually called The Guardian of the Boat. It is a story that originates in Central Africa and it's a creation story, a story about how the world came into being. So in my hand here, I have a little book that we put together, which accompanied the exhibition. And it had all of the stories written by the artists um, that they based their sculptures on. So there's a little drawing that Jill's done of another sculpture that she's done and the little story that accompanies it. And here I've marked the story with a bright piece of paper so that I didn't lose my place. Here is the story of the guardian of the boat, which I will read to you a little bit later. And there is the image uh, that Jill has drawn. And this book has got the 17 different artworks and stories from the children's exhibition. Right guys, now I'm going to show you an example of what we are going to make today, inspired by the sculptures of Jill Jabeir and the fact that she bases a lot of her sculptures and what she makes on stories. Um, and today we are going to make a story stable. Now you're probably wondering what is that funny word and what does it mean? You're probably more familiar with the word mobile. I'm going to show you an example that I've made with my little birds. A mobile is something that's three dimensional. Sometimes it moves and it hangs, okay? So the three dimensional elements hang down from a structure at the top. But today I'm going to show you, and we're going to have a look here at some of the stables which we are going to make today. And today I'm very happy to say that we've been helped by some lovely young artists. So to Thomas and to Gemma, who've made some beautiful drawings for me that I've added to my stable, I want to say a very special thank you. And here is an example of the stable that we're going to make. We are going to create something that's circular, that stands, and that has various drawing layers. So a stable as opposed to a mobile stands on a surface rather than hanging from a structure. And we're going to create a series of four layers of drawings on our four pieces of paper. And then we're going to turn it into a three-dimensional story. And the very nice thing about that like with Thomas's little drawings here, you can move your drawings around and you can see the start of the drawing. This is one of the stories from the children's exhibition called Mouse and the stories that they ran away. Thomas made some beautiful drawings of the main characters and of what happens in that story. And you can turn your little stable around to see the various parts of your story. There's another story up here of Uncle Noor's pigeons and you can see that some of the images are made when they're further in the background, they're made a little bit smaller. 
In this one, I've actually taken a little kebab stick. I've pushed it through my piece of paper and other things can be attached to it. And you can even hang things from it. So you can have little elements of mobiles as well as part of your stable. So let's get to our making. Right guys, so let's look at the materials that we will need today to make our beautiful stay bile that I've just shown you some examples of. So first of all, we need four pieces, four times an A4 page. And this is an A4 page that I have here. And you're going to need four pieces like that to make that stay bile. I'm gonna put that aside. Next, you're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need drawing materials because a lot of our activity today is about making beautiful drawings. So cokey pens or pencil crayons, little bits of paint, crayons, whatever you have to draw with and that you enjoy drawing with. And then we also need a stapler and perhaps a little bit of glue just to put our various layers together when we're making our art piece. So let me show you how to prepare those four sheets of paper. So page number one, this is our A4 page. You are going to fold it so that you have three quarters on one side and one quarter that you are going to cut off. So how do we do that? We take a full sheet of paper like I have here. You fold it in half and you just pinch it up in that corner to give you the halfway mark and then from the end again you turn it in and you pinch it to get the quarter mark when you are certain about that position and when you've got it nicely lined up at the top then you are going to fold your piece of paper so that you have your three quarters and your one quarter and what we're going to do with this sheet is then you're going to cut along the fold like that. So there we have one quarter, three quarter, and we're cutting the dotted line. So you're going to take your pair of scissors and you're going to cut that bit of paper off there. And this is your first sheet of paper. Let's put that aside. Your second two pieces of paper, let me get the right one. So your second piece of paper, as well as your third piece of paper, we are also going to divide into three quarters and one quarter. So let's take a sheet and show you how to do that. Here's our A4 piece of paper again. Remember, we're keeping the bit that we cut off just to the side. This time, we are not folding it like we did the previous one. We're folding it lengthwise. So we're going to get our halfway mark. Let your corner meet up nicely there so that you have a correct halfway mark and just pinch it to show you where your halfway mark is. And then we're going to fold it into that halfway mark where the pinch is and pinch the side to get our quarter. And then you're going to flatten that down very nicely to get your quarter so that, like our second sheet, there we have it, three quarters, one quarter. And we are going to, again, cut off the one quarter area. And we're going to lay that aside. And this is your second layer. And we're going to put that aside for us to use again. Your third piece of paper, we're going to do exactly as we did for number two, exactly the same. Here's my little diagram, three quarters, one quarter. We're going to fold it lengthwise, get our halfway mark, fold it into the center on that halfway mark to get half of a half, which is a quarter. And we're going to cut our strip off. Now guys, for this exercise, you can actually use, this paper is quite light, but it does actually stand, as you saw in my examples previously, to give you a lovely stay bow. Or you can use a stiffer card as well. I'm putting my three pieces aside and we're going to put our third sheet aside. And then for our fourth and final sheet, 
Very simply, we need one sheet of A4 paper that we're going to fold in half lengthwise. That's what my diagram looks like to guide you half and half. So we're doing lots of fractions today, guys. <laughs> and we're folding our sheet of paper in half. And along that fold, again, we are going to cut. The important thing about this activity, guys, is in the preparation and having all our pieces, um, the shape and the size that we need. And now we're going to take our two long sheets and we are going to create a long rectangular format for the final layer of our stabile. I'm going to just glue the end and we're going to attach it end to end so that we have a nice long sheet of paper to work on. Right guys, now that you've prepared your four sheets of paper for your stable, I'm just going to show you what they look like. I've numbered them. You don't have to put a big red number on them. Obviously yours are going to be filled with beautiful drawings. My numbers are just so that you can see what we've done. So there's your first layer, which is almost a square. Your second and your third layer, which is exactly the same which is a rectangle. And then your very last layer, which is this long piece of paper, very long rectangle, which we're going to use for the front of the stay bar. So let's put that aside. And what I'd like to do now is to read the beautiful story of the guardian of the boat from our exhibition for children called And So the Stories Ran Away. This is a story that's been retold by Jill Jaber, who wrote the story and also made the beautiful sculptures that have inspired us today. And there's a lovely drawing of the character, the main character in the story. The story is called The Guardian of the Boat. The creator Kavum lived by himself in the forest and became lonely because there were no people or animals in his world. One day, he went out and collected seeds of all kinds. He called his friend the ancient crocodile and asked her help to pull his canoe into the middle of the great river. There, Kavum took each seed one at a time, looked at it and rubbed it in the palm of his hands. He then breathed on it and threw it to the bank saying, you shall be a man and with another, you shall be a woman and you shall be a snake, you a lion, you a mouse, you a bird, you a frog, you a bee, you a cow, you a monkey, and so on, till all the seeds were used up. When Kavum returned to the shore, all the creatures he created were waiting for him. He gave them all their names and places, and they lived happily together for a while. It was a wonderful time. Right guys, so now we're going to start our lovely drawings for our stable, And I'm going to start with layer number one, which is in the shape of a square piece of paper. And what I thought we would do for this activity, just because it's fun and I like this technique very much, and it's a little bit different from just drawing with dry media, is to do what I call a wax resist. Now the story of Kavum that I've just read is set out in the forest and so we're going to do some outdoor scenes for the stable and we're going to start with the sky and the clouds in the background. For this activity we're going to need our drawing materials, our pastels. So you can use a pastel which is an oil pastel or a wax crayon and there's a reason why it needs to be either oily or waxy so that it will resist the ink that we do afterwards. So I'm going to do my sky area on the top and we're going to fill about a third or a half of the page because you won't really see the bottom once the stay by is set up. We're going to draw with white oil pastel onto white paper. Sometimes that's difficult to see. Sometimes the pastel's a little bit more of a creamy color than the white piece of paper. You may be able to see that difference or not. Depending on the lighting on your room, if you hold the piece of paper up and look down the sheet of paper, you'll be able to see the mark or the shape that you're making if you need to check. But really, this is about keeping it quite free 
and expressive and you need to press quite hard on that pastel or that wax crayon for this technique to work. If you're pressing hard enough, then you get little bits of crayon dust or pastel dust kind of settling on your piece of paper. You can see it as I've dusted it off the paper there. And I'm doing different kinds of marks to make a variety of different clouds for my skies. And just have fun with this, guys. Taking some of that dust off my paper. Right. And now for the fun part. Once you've done it about halfway down or a third of the way down, we're now going to use a wet medium, a little bit of watercolor paint if you like. And I quite like my skies to be different colors. And as you put the beautiful wet ink or watercolor paint down, your clouds jump out and you can see them and you can see the shapes being revealed. Uh, let's add a different kind of red. And you can see as those colors run into each other, they make new colors, which is always fun. And for some of you who really do like blue skies, and I love blue skies too, we can add a bit of blue and as it mixes in with the other colors, it makes some beautiful purple, little bits of gray. And taking that down just to about halfway. And there you have a beautiful sky. That's another one that I tried a little bit earlier. And you can set that aside while you are doing your other drawings. So let me show you what I've done for my other drawings on my other layers. This is the story of Kavum and it's set outside in the forests. So for my second layer, I've done a little drawing in pencil and I've drawn some hills in the background, uh, some sort of smaller trees in the background. So as you see a picture, as those images extend further away from you, they become smaller. And I've got some birds and animals in the tree and because Kavum traveled down the river with his crocodile, I've actually put the river into my drawing there. For my third layer, so this is a picture showing the part of the story in the distance as you're looking into the distance. For my third layer, I'm drawing images a lot bigger. I'm filling the whole sheet. I'm adding bigger trees. I'm seeing some of those um, creatures and animals a little bit close up and we're going to do something very special with the third layer when we put our stable together. So whatever images you're drawing on your third layer needs to be quite big and there need to be clear spaces in between them and I'll show you why in a minute. And then on my last layer I'm focusing on the main character of the story which is our creator Kavum and there he is in his boat led by the ancient crocodile you can just see his head creeping out so that's going to be my river down at the bottom some animals through the trees as well and you can see that i'm filling that entire space guys so we don't want little tiny drawings there we want them really nice and big filling the space so that we can see them clearly and i'm going to do a bit of coloring while you get your drawing started as well Right guys, now that I've shown you um, my different drawings on the different layers, I'm going to start adding the color, which is really the fun part. Now this is layer number two that I'm working on here. And I've decided to work in pencil crown for this layer. And you can use, again, any colors that you like to make your images. The reason why I'm using pencil crown is because they're not as bright as the Cokies. And I will introduce the Cokie when I do my other layers of my images that are more close up and not as far away, because this gives us beautiful light tones. And really you can just enjoy doing these in whatever way you like. Now what's going to happen with this image, whether you were drawing houses here or hills, it doesn't matter. But you see there that I have that horizon line or that division between my sky and my hills. Now we've already created a sky from our wax resist 
So that area of this layer is going to be cut away and we're just going to see the hill. So you don't have to put any color in there at the moment. And that's why I'm just doing my hills. And again, you can use a variety of colors. I'm using some different pencils, different color greens to make my trees. And take your time. You can put as many details in as you like. Drawing your hills and your picture. Okay guys, now we get to the fun bit and that's um, the part where we're going to put everything together. You've made your beautiful drawings and I'm going to reinforce your layers. So that's drawing number one, which we did the wax resist with and we created a beautiful sky and a background. Drawing number two, which are your things that are further away in the distance and part of setting the scene of your drawing. Drawing number three, and I've just wanted to save some time so I've already started to cut it and I'll explain that in a minute. And then drawing number four, which is your long drawing, which we do very lost. Right, so let's start with drawing number one. Basically, it's really simple because we are making this three dimensional. We're just going to turn our flat drawings into circular cylinders. So we are creating a three-dimensional shape. I've put a little bit of glue there. You can also use a stapler to reinforce. So I'm just taking my piece of paper, I'm turning it around and I'm sticking it down. And that's my little cylinder. And if you wanted to, you could take your stapler and you could staple the top and the bottom. And what I found quite useful just in terms of giving it a beautiful visual effect is that you can also do a little bit of the color, maybe with a bit of paint on the inside if you wanted to as well. But let's put that aside. That's our first one. Our second layer of paper. Now we have a sky area which we want to see. So this time we're going to take our pair of scissors and we are going to cut the sky area away because we have a sky already. These extra bits you can use for little bits of drawing and any interesting details that you want to add later on. We're going to do exactly the same with our second layer. We're going to take a little bit of glue along that edge on the one side. It can be on either side, it doesn't matter. And we take our drawing and very carefully, because we don't want to damage the beautiful work that we've done, we're going to turn it around and Turn it into our three-dimensional drawing and we're going to pop our second layer on our stable. There we go and that's our sky with our heels in the front. Right guys, now for layer number three, this is where we've drawn some of our images to fill the whole sheet like I've explained beforehand and these elements we want to cut out and make interesting three-dimensional elements as part of our story. You can see in this one that Gemma has helped me out with that I've added some animals and freestanding trees in the background in front of the hills. In Uncle Noor's pigeons we've done some lampposts with birds sitting on them as our third layer. Um, in Thomas's layer here, we've taken some of his lovely drawings and we've added that 
into um, the stable as an additional three-dimensional um, element that makes it really interesting. So whatever you've chosen to do on your third layer, you're going to cut it out really carefully and we're going to stabilize it on a base. Right guys, now that you've cut out your drawings from your layer number three, I'm going to show you how to put it onto a base so that it stands up beautifully. If you've got some really intricate cutting, number one, you can ask mom or dad or an adult in the house to help you with the cutting if that's been difficult. If you've got little bits of detail that's very hard to get the scissor around, you can just leave the bits around it on and then you can just add some color like I'm doing which will pick up on the color of the hills in the background. So there are all kinds of ways to help us out to make things a little bit easier. Try and get all of those little bits off the edge there. Right, now if we hold our drawing up, because this is on a softer paper, they are a little bit floppy and we need to reinforce them to make them stronger. So using bits of your off cuts and your other pieces of paper that you have, I've just taken this piece that I've cut with my heels, taken some glue, glue the piece of paper and then just roll it one on top of the other to make a stiff little supporting stick or background. I'm just putting a little bit more glue there to make it really sticky and then I'm going to put it onto the back of this tree to make it stronger and more stable and I'm securing it with a little piece of tape and you can also staple it if you like so it stands a little bit more firmly and then I just cut that bit off on the end and I can do the same with my other tree using that bit from layer number two putting some glue down rolling it to make a strong stick you may have a kebab stick or um, a little wooden stick or a lollipop stick you can use anything actually to reinforce with it doesn't have to be paper putting some glue down there just to make it strong a little piece of tape over it to ensure that it doesn't come off and because we don't really want to see it sticking out we're going to cut that bit off there right so we've got our trees standing a little bit stronger and now we're going to make the base so remember layer number two and three, we cut that quarter piece off at the beginning. So we're now going to use it to make our base. And again, like we reinforced those thinner sticks, we're going to just reinforce this paper by folding it over, gluing it, folding it over, and just making a nice narrow strip that way. Taking the other piece from layer number two or layer number three, quarter that we didn't use, turning it over, reinforcing it, making it beautifully strong and then we're going to attach it together. So you can do this if you really want it strong you can put some glue down first and here's where you can use your little stapler and just staple that in. And we want to test how that's going to fit around our second layer we don't want it too big um, and we don't want it too tight so that it can't move around so that's about a good a, a good distance can lift it up again and we just staple it down again little bits of glue to reinforce take that extra bit of glue off and now in whatever position you'd like to put them you put your trees down again extra little bit of reinforcement and staple and our other tree extra little bit of reinforcement there and staple it down and then we can 
Now, paper's quite nice because you can manipulate it a little bit. So just gently, if your paper's thin, if you've got thicker cardboard, obviously it will be stronger. But if you just bend them slightly, then they tend to stand up straighter. And there are our trees for our second layer. You can put them closer together. And if you've discovered, wow, I've got extra space on the side and I'd like to make more trees, you can take another piece of paper if you have it and you can add some extra details. And so you have a tree that you can see more clearly, some animals and the hills in the distance, and then your beautiful sky. Right guys, and now for our final layer and our final drawing, which has all of our main characters of our story. So like Jim has drawn her beautiful Kavoom there, there is my guardian of the boat on his boat and there's the ancient crocodile and some animals that he's created while he's thrown his seeds. And I'm wondering if you can notice that on this drawing, I've made my colors a little bit brighter and more intense because they are right in front and the colors in the background, I've sort of faded it and used lighter tones so that it looks like it's further in the distance. And you can really do it any way that you like. Um, so what we do with this final layer is that we also make a little circle and we make it stand around. Now, in order for it not to hide all of the lovely details, what you can do, like I've done with Gemma's drawing there and my pigeons and also the mouse's story, is I cut little areas away to make little windows that we can see through. So I'm going to cut out some of my in-between or the negative spaces Sometimes we make a bit of a mistake. That's fine. Let's just fix that with some tape. Just fix my little tear there. That's good. I'm going to take a bit around my rhino. I'm going to do the trees. Let's take a bit of this away. I don't want to cut my plant away, so let's go around our little plant. And you can cut it very carefully and get all of the details in, or you can leave little bits of spaces. It's really up to you. And again, guys, if you can't handle the scissor on your own, can be quite difficult and tricky. Ask an adult to help you. And I'll show you a trick if you've got an inside space there where you can't get the scissor through is just to pinch your paper, cut a little hole and then the scissor fits inside the hole and you can move it around and cut that inside space away. And this one is really like a little window because it's completely surrounded. Our images. And let's see what we've got. You can decide if you want to cut any more. Let's take our final layer. A little bit of glue at the end. Actually, I don't want to lose the crocodile snout, so I don't want to do it that way. I'm going to do it the other way instead. I'm going to glue that way. Join our two pieces up. And look at that, the line of that fits beautifully. You can take bits of your cokey and you can just make things join a little bit more accurately. And again, because we've got nice thin paper that we can manipulate, you can take your ends, you can fold them gently so that they don't break. And we put our final layer on. And there we go. Our beautiful story of the guardian of the boat 
and we can shift it around and see some of the little details through the bits of openings and windows that we've created. Another story from the children's exhibition. Right guys, I hope that you've really enjoyed our activity and remember you can post examples of what you've done, send it to our Facebook page or our Instagram page at the Zeitsmoker so that we can see your lovely work and what you've done. And we've been watched over today by Jill's Guardian figure um, and we've created some beautiful things, we've been creative and it is an activity that's going to require a little bit of patience and maybe you can do it over a couple of days as well. So I hope you enjoy and join us next time for our next open studio in two weeks time. Goodbye.